Hello, Dr. Kronk here. I'm the founder and president of American Spinal Injury and Impairment Consultants. And today what I want to talk about is the mechanism injury. Mechanism of injury is a really important concept to understand because if you understand mechanism of injury, you understand what the injuries can be from the various mechanisms and then logical diagnostic procedures to identify the severity and location of the condition can occur. So when a patient is injured, they can go through a number of different mechanisms. That A mechanism, as we look here, is a force delivery system that's capable of causing injury to the human body. So if we look at uh, the previous slide, we'll see that there was various things that the patient was involved in that could cause injury. That's called a mechanism. So if we look at just what a mechanism is purely, a mechanism is nothing more than a force delivery system that's capable of causing injury to the human body. So a dog is capable of causing injury to the human body, but because you're around dogs doesn't mean you get injured by a dog. It also means doesn't mean that because you're around a dog, you get a serious injury if you're injured by a dog. There can be mild, moderate, severe injuries. But what we have to understand is that the mechanism is the force delivery system capable of causing injury to the human body. And the injury is the actual injury itself. It's called an injury. It's called a lesion. It's called a derangement. It's called a deformity. It's called a wound pattern. There are various names that it's called, but we have this mechanism and we have this injury. Now, what's very interesting here is that each mechanism leaves a clinical telltale sign or a lesion pattern behind that's consistent with the mechanism. So when we look at, so this derangement, this wound, this lesion, this injury pattern, we wouldn't say that this was left behind by a dog, right? So each injury pattern that's left behind gives us an indication of what mechanism potentially caused the injury pattern in the first place. Now, many doctors today, and I've trained thousands of doctors, don't understand that simple concept that basically if we have a lesion pattern that's left behind, it indicates one, the mechanism that caused it, and two, now we can start to evaluate the severity and location of the injury itself. So, and we, we don't have to be so overwhelmed with the mechanism science. So there's science for the mechanism. Mechanism science is usually science to develop to make the mechanism safer, so there's less chance of human wound or less chance of human injury with the particular mechanism. But like in this example here, you wouldn't look and say, well, geez, that looks like a dog bite or that looks like a burn. Obviously, the, you know, you'd be in the wrong place. The patient would obviously be in with the wrong doctor. So we know that here's the mechanism that would cause that wound pattern that's left behind, but we also know that the doctor that's treating these injuries simply would not wonder or need to really know much about the mechanism that caused the injury. They need to know more about the injury. As a matter of fact, this gunshot wound, probably the doctor would not be thinking much about the, the gun or the load of the shell or how far away the person was shot from because obviously the person has a significant injury. Now, just like with this injury, um, a person can have different levels of injury from the same mechanism. Just because people are around guns doesn't mean they get injured. But if they do get injured by a gun, there's a very, very um, a clinically suggestive lesion pattern that's left behind. And that's very, very obvious. So if we took this same person and we shot them and we just scratched the surface of the skin and grazed it, the person still has been shot, but it's a very minor gunshot wound. So today, doctors have to be more in the area of understanding injury evaluation science, where there, to, you know, in, in, in the past, there maybe has been an overabundance of mechanism science. Today, we need injury science. We need doctors that can actually identify and know the lesion patterns that are left behind. So when I'm teaching, oftentimes, I go over these various injury patterns, and I'm with doctors that treat injuries from car, car collisions. But yet when I have the doctor simply close their eyes and say, okay, dog or dog bite, they see the dog bite wound, burn, hot grease. They see the burn wound. They see the lesion pattern that's left behind. If I say gun, gunshot, they see the lesion pattern that's left behind. Now, bear in mind with this next question, they may be treating thousands of patients that have been in auto collisions. We'll just use that as a mechanism. But yet when I say auto collision and have them close their eyes, they don't see any lesion patterns. Matter of fact, oftentimes they don't even know the common lesion patterns that are left behind. 
and especially those that are imageable. Now, this is significant because if we look at National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration stats, we know that just because a person is in a auto accident doesn't mean they're injured. If you have six patients that are in an auto and they're all in the same auto injury, how does one explain that they all have different levels of injury when they all were involved with the same mechanism? So we need doctors today that are good with injury evaluation science, good with injury treatment science, and part of that science and part of that, 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 that progress is having providers understand that when they have a auto collision, say, or when they have something that causes compressive or shear forces to the spine, there are three imageable lesion patterns that are left behind that can be assessed for the severity and location of the condition. So we have a sprain finding, which leaves abnormal translation or angular findings behind. That's picked up on x-ray and computerized radiographic mensuration analysis. We also can have disc herniations, which are best evaluated in a weight-bearing situation with an upright weight-bearing MRI. And we could also have fractures, which are best evaluated with x-ray and CT. So we have different imaging technologies that basically pick up these very these different lesion patterns. But when we have a, a, comp a compressive or a shear force to the spine, it basically equals usually ligament injuries, which equal abnormal translation or angular patterns picked up on flexion extension X-ray, DMX, and CRMA. Or we have the disc herniations, or we have fracture patterns. Those are the three imageable lesions that are left behind. Those are the, the, the derangement patterns that are so important for doctors today to be able to assess and quantify, objectify, because those are the same lesion patterns that are involved with all impairment of the spine. So if we look in the impairment guides, the three most common lesions are a lesion called alteration of motion segment integrity, which is a criteria measured for translation and angular patterns found on, on the sprain injury. We have disc herniations and we also have fractures. And here are all the fractures. And depending on the level and the significance of these conditions, the AMA guides assesses a different impairment value. So you have conditions that cause permanent impairment and the doctors that are treating these conditions must know that these conditions are there. It's very difficult to explain how your treatment can be successful when you don't have the severity and location of the condition that you're treating evaluated. And if the patient doesn't fully recover, it's very difficult today <clears throat> to say, doctor, you missed this finding and this finding and you put a treatment plan in place and the treatment plan was not successful. Everyone knows that when there's a delay in total diagnosis of a condition, there's usually a delay in the response. Sometimes that delay is permanent. So today we need providers that can make assessments right away as to the severity and the location of the injuries that these patients are being treated with because if not, these conditions cause, they are the number one cause of disability and chronic pain in the world today. And that process is not going to stop until we actually have providers that accurately understand these conditions, accurately understand these technologies, and accurately understand how to apply them for good, accurate, early differential diagnosis so that an appropriate treatment plan can be determined. That's what we teach doctors at the American Spinal Injury, Injury and Impairment Consultants. And that's why we have a doctor's training center, a provider training center. So if you went out to amsic.com and you went to product resources, you're going to see a link that's right into the provider training center. And in that provider training center, we have training for providers on these things that are so-called soft tissue injuries that cause, that are the number one cause of pain and disability worldwide. Now we have that program very inexpensively, $37 a month for the provider to log in and to have monthly coaching calls, to have bonuses, to have all the video recorded uh, webinars, have all the information updated on a month to month basis. There's a forum, they can become part of the community. So that doctors today are not they're, not, they're understanding these conditions that the patients have so that they can cut down the amount of pain and disability that these conditions cause. 
And that's what we're doing at the American Spinal Injury and Impairment Consultants. And that's, I wanted providers just to understand mechanism of injury is very, very important to understand. Thank you.